What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Sevilla career mode in FIFA 21 and this is going to be episode number 16 and in the last episode it was a huge one if you guys remember you know we started off the episode decent we got into the, Janu uh, the January transfer window with wins against Villarreal and Athletic Club then we lost to Real Madrid in the Supercopa semi-final which put it out of that competition then we lost on Sim to relegation or so relegation threatened Leganes. Then we lost on penalties to Real Batiste, which knocks us out of both the Supercopa and the Copa de España. And so now, you know, we've won the Super Cup and we still got the Champions League and La Liga to play for. And uh, La Liga is close. Real Madrid 43, us and Barca 42, and Atletico Madrid 41. And we're exactly halfway through the La Liga season. And it just ticks up from here, guys. We play Real Madrid to start off this episode. And we also got a round of 16 draw for the Champions League. So you'll be finding out who that is. And we might get a one leg or maybe even two legs of that into this one. But if you guys are enjoying the series, make sure to like and subscribe. And turn that bell icon so you don't miss out when I post more. So check the Twitch and the Discord in the description. Here we go. We got Real Madrid next. And we do have some tired players simply because of that 120 tired and frustrating minutes against Real Batiste and things like that. And yeah, um, Gabriel Jesus is going to be... He's going to have to play for this one. I mean, I, I can't bench these players. I really can't, unfortunately. So we're going with our strongest lineup. We're not going to sign a left winger until after this game. Trust me, I'm not delaying it anymore. After this, we'll go into it. Seuss is going to start in the left wing, though. And yeah, Real Madrid, Sevilla. This is for top of the table in La Liga to start up the second half of our La Liga campaign. Let's get into it. Here we go. Let's make them unhappy at the Bernabeu. Here we are guys, we are in the Bernabeu facing Real Madrid. We were just here a couple weeks ago and we know what happened. We lost in the Supercopa semi-final, a chance for us to make to another cup final. All it took was one game and they beat us out there. And We remember who scored, we remember Benzema scored, we remember Marco Asensio scored. I actually don't know who scored the other goal, but you know, you get the point, okay? Real Madrid, Sevilla, arguably the two biggest teams right now in La Liga. And it's at the top of the table. Here we go, it's a little bit foggy and stuff, but yeah, we that's not going to stop us from playing our best at all. Oh no, chance here, chance here, chance here, and Aiden Hazard is so wide open on the left-hand side. Ricardo Pereira must have gone somewhere else there. Yeah, he got caught marking some midfielder, and Aiden Hazard gets his 13th goal in La Liga this season, and we're down early. Here's Gabriel Jesus playing this one all the way out right here for Suso. Suso has so much space. All I'm looking for is a cutback. And Luka Modric, he's against his former team. He scored against them in the last fixture in La Liga this season. And there it is. Luka Modric has scored again against Real Madrid. I was trying to actually do the respect celebration, but it didn't quite work. But yeah, Luka Modric has got his fourth goal in La Liga this season. You know, he's not really a goal scorer. He has a lot more assists. I'll show you guys that maybe at one point, maybe this episode. But we have equalized against Real Madrid. It's one to one. Oh, that's a great pass. That is a great pass. And Kareem Benzema, one versus one. He is not missing that. Go Papa Gomez so well, and he gets back and covers them. And now Martin Odegaard could break here. I can't do anything about it. And David De Gea makes it another excellent save. If it wasn't for David De Gea, we would be completely destroyed right now. But now here's Kareem Benzema and David De Gea again. Looking for an equalizer here. We have about 20 minutes plus stoppage time. Still looking around here. Here's Suso, and he's done it. Suso, man, you know, there's some speculation if could he be the guy to go forward? Do we even need to sign a left winger? I mean, put that all aside. He has just equalized here against Real Madrid. Has beaten them by speed. Alejandro Papugomez one-on-one against Thibaut Courtois. I don't know if I should have taken an extra touch there, but we just wasted an opportunity, man. For Real Madrid. And they only give one minute of stoppage time. And this will be the final chance of the game. Here goes Cristian Porto. And I took too many touches. You have got to be kidding me. And looks like the game is going to end in a stalemate. A 2-2 two -to -two draw. We cannot capitalize against Real Madrid the second time. And we're going to have to stay behind Real Madrid in La Liga for now. And... It's unfortunate, but, you know, at least we didn't lose, and we just move on from here as there's still plenty of time to win the title in La Liga. 
one draw against Real Madrid has dropped us from second to fourth, and Barcelona now lead La Liga. I believe I believe Real Madrid were top of the table for every match week, day or whatever this year. Except I think we were there for maybe like match day 15 or 16, and now Barcelona lead. Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid are tied, and then we are there at 43 points. Looking at some of the players we have on this list that could play there, we have Cristiano Ronaldo, which would be an insane signing, and then we also have Lorenzo Insigne. And after looking through these players, Players, you can definitely obviously tell that Cristiano Ronaldo is the better player. He's 89, and despite him being 36, you know, it's only going to be for half a season and other things like that. And, you know, he looks like the better player on paper, but in terms of realism and things like that, and who, like, what we need and just for an improvement, Lorenzo Insigne would be perfect. He's 85 rated. His, he can naturally play left wing and center forward. He's a little bit smaller, but he's quick. He can he balance as well, which is a nice thing. You know, he won't get pushed off the ball as easily as some smaller players like them. He also is pretty good at the sh shooting, and he got short passes, decent. He can curve the ball really well, so it helps him cut inside and take a nice shot. And Lorenzo Insigne was actually suggested by someone way early on to sign actually um, earlier in like season number one. And it just makes sense for Lorenzo Insigne to be the replacement for Lucas Ocampos. I know some of you guys probably wanted Cristiano Ronaldo to come, but Lorenzo and Cini, why not try him? Not, um, not always go with, like, you know, the big name player of uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. But either way, um, we're kind of negotiating here for some money. I'm going to ask for a 71.5 million transfer sum, and that's going to be enough to buy Insigne. So for the wage, he's willing to take a big cut here of 70,000 and actually willing to take a squad roll of rotation, and it's really easy to pay for Lorenzo and Insigne. So all I got to do is accept this, and Lorenzo and Insigne he has transferred from Napoli, and now he's part of Sevilla. Let's go. And so looking at the team after Lorenzo, Lorenzo Insigne comes in, he's gonna immediately start. I think he's unhappy because simply because he was just unhappy at uh, Napoli, which is another reason why I think we should sign him. But he's got really good stats, and he is gonna make his debut actually here as we play Alaves. And I am going to do a visual sim for this one. So absolutely nothing happened in that first half, really, just two shots for us. And given the fact Alaves is 10th place and we are not leading La Liga, I kind of want to, you know, win La Liga with some more, you know, not as many sim results as much as I can. Oliver Torres. Here's Lorenzo Insigne. Here goes Lorenzo Insigne! And on his debut, he almost curled one into the top corner. Here's Gabriel Jesus playing this one all the way to the left-hand side for Lorenzo Insigne. Lorenzo Insigne is going to make a move here. Still Lorenzo Insigne. Maybe should have shot it. And... They've actually given a penalty here. All it takes is a little touch on Lorenzo Insigne's back heel, and they give a penalty. Oh my goodness. And Lorenzo Insigne is a fun player to play with, cutting inside. I actually signed him in one of my Road to Glory career modes because he was like on a free at like 33 years old, and that guy's amazing. And actually for this one, you know, Gabriel Jesus is our main guy, but just because Lorenzo Insigne, it's his debut, and he earned the penalty. Why not take the penalty with Lorenzo Insigne to make it 1-0? And on his debut, he missed it. Okay, here's Lorenzo Insigne. Maybe he can make up for that missed penalty. And he still goes Lorenzo Insigne. He's trying to still go all the way through this Alaves defense. And that is why we splashed the cash on Lorenzo Insigne. And he's got his first goal as a Sevilla player. It's as if he never made a mistake ever before. And it's 1-0. That's the breakthrough that has put us ahead against Alaves. Here's Gabriel Jesus playing this one from Marcos Acuna. And looking back here for Gabriel Jesus. And Gabriel Jesus tried the spectacular. And it actually almost worked. Unfortunately, that was a little bit off, but imagine if that went in. Oh, that's a very good ball, and maybe Alaves could look to get in behind, and they do. Still Lorenzo and Senior. I'm going to run at them, and here's Gabriel Jesus. Still Gabriel Jesus, kind of got in behind here. I just need someone in the middle, and we've done it! In the 93rd minute, we have done it. Oscar has gotten the three points. And the Sevilla fans and players have gone crazy. Because we know how much that means for us in this season. Terrible mistake from the goalie. Gabriel Jesus is able to bring out the goalie and find Oscar. And Oscar puts it between the goalie and defender. And in the 93rd minute, Oscar has got his second goal in La Liga. And our second goal in this game to win it. And that that's the final whistle for you.
So here's your monthly, or you could say really every episode, the, um, a youth scouting report update. And you know, this is our youth academy, and it's, again, we have very quality players. No one good enough to completely promote yet, and unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna really see any of them in action or anything. So our next game here in La Liga is against Granada, and I am going with the first team here, and they are about 11th or 12th place, so not really a team that's really competing for much like Europa League or anything like that. So I am going to start with a visual sim on this one. Oh, chance here, and Granada have taken the lead in the 52nd minute, guys, and... Back-to-back -back games, we're gonna have to jump in here. I mean, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Usually, against these types of teams, we generally beat them on simulation. We're looking for some sort of equalizer here, and we've had excellent passing all around. Oh, that is brilliant passing, and it's an excellent team goal from Sevilla. And Porto has equalized in the 67th minute. Did you guys see that passing? I don't know how much I'm gonna show on the edit, so I'm just gonna show you it all here. Oh my goodness, that is absolutely brilliant. It's the 91st minute, the last minute of the game. If we want a winner, guys, it has to come now. And Christian Porto, man, get off the field. What are you doing? And we suffer a draw against Granada. Absolutely unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. That's all I got to say. So looking at La Liga after that loss we took, or sorry, not, not that loss, but that draw, I mean, all the other teams kept winning, and yeah, we drew. So now we're a full three points back from Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid, and four points back from Barcelona, and what do you know, our next game in La Liga is against Atletico Madrid, but we're going to get into this one, and it, it, it really is a big one. We need to, I think, win this. This has got to be a must-win game. So, yeah, hopefully we can do that, and here we go. So here we are in Madrid, facing Atletico Madrid in the rain. Match day number 23. And, okay, so our form uh, in La Liga hasn't been the greatest lately. Oh, look at this, guys. Atletico Madrid are the best defense. If you just saw, they have... Just 17 goals conceded in 22 games. That's incredible. And in 22 games, we've also scored 52 goals. And, well, um, let's not talk about that because Atletico Madrid almost actually scored there as they hit the post. Um, that's not going to help us in the attack as we still need a goal here. We could actually get a goal early here. And Gabriel Jesus, against one of the best keepers in the world, has put a perfect bottom left finish and Alejandro Papu Gomez gets the assist and that is the perfect way to start off the second half as we now lead 1-0 thanks to Gabriel Jesus' 14th goal in La Liga. Here's Alejandro Papu Gomez. Here's Lorenzo Insigne. Does well to find Gabriel Jesus. And now Lorenzo Insigne. He's got space to run into and he's beaten them by pace and Lorenzo Insigne has made a 2-0 against Atletico Madrid. Oh, Atletico Madrid could look to break here with Alvaro Morata. I'm trying to play Joao Felix offside, and I might have, but actually great defending by um, Julius Kunde here, and we could look to break here. Here goes Alejandro Papu Gomez. All I got is to beat this defender. He's cut inside here, and Alejandro Papu Gomez has used his left foot and completely carved out this Atletico Madrid defense. Oh my gosh. That is absolutely brilliant play from Atletico Madrid. And I, I wasn't even commentating because it happened so fast. But what a save from David De Gea. I mean, David De Gea has really made some excellent saves recently. And we could look to break here. And here goes Yavi Valverde. Yavi Valverde! Our youngster, our youth academy product has made it 4 Nil. He came off the bench for a tired Lorenzo Insigne, and it is am I, I, it's amazing to see uh, our youth academy players, especially in just like a two-season career mode, for them to come up here and produce like that. That's just his second goal in La Liga, his third goal all season. Remember, he had one in the Super Cup, and it's 4-0 against Atletico Madrid. Oh no, Atletico Madrid are looking to get... I mean, I, 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 I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. It's like all these amazing games we have, we can never keep a clean sheet. 
So it's full time. We win 4-1. If there's any complaint I have, it's just giving up the clean sheet in the 80th minute. But it's an amazing result for us. It hurts Atletico Madrid, but we're going to now advance um, up to at least third place as, yeah, Atletico Madrid have dropped points here and we've taken three against them and it's a, it was a good result so after that win in La Liga against Atletico Madrid we have Atleti Club who's currently 14th place and I'm gonna go with my strongest lineup and do a quick sim here and it's a nice three to one win Gabriel Jesus scoring a brace and Diego Carlos also getting on the score sheet so after those back-to-back -back wins in La Liga we are now third place but guys it is still a very close title race because we are still tied with Atletico Madrid for third place we just have a better goal difference and then we're only three points back from Real Madrid, still four points back from Barcelona with 14 games to go. But if you're wondering why I'm on this screen and not on the main screen, it's because it is time to reveal the Champions League round of 16 draw. And in the round of 16, we have been drawn... Dinamo Zigadab. Yes, guys, we got first in our group going perfect and only conceding three goals and scoring 16, and we got an easy draw. If you're wondering how Dinamo Zagreb got here, it's because um, they got second in their group uh, with Manchester City and AS Monaco and Leverkusen. And real quick, I don't think I actually ever showed you guys the group results. You know our group, we got first and Leicester City got second. Uh, Man City got first and Dinamo Zagreb got second in their group, Monaco third. Here we got Inter and then Bayern and PSV and Moscow. Here we got Atletico Madrid and Milan, RB Leipzig missing out over um, Milan, which is a little bit interesting. Here we got FC Barcelona and PSG winning as probably expected, with Gladbach getting third and last last. Then we got Juventus and Liverpool with Porto third and Salzburg fourth. And then Real Madrid, Chelsea with Moscow and Dinamo Kiev after them. And then here we have Befica and Spurs and then Napoli kind of missing out on Rangers. Honestly, this is a team you would expect me to do a visual sim or a quick sim against, but it's the round of 16 first leg. First team out there, we're playing this one. Maybe you can get this tie over with. So here we are, traveling to play Dynamo Zgrab. Honestly, I think we should be heavy favorites in this one. Um, I think given the fact that it's the first leg, we're on the road. I think we look to try to get a really good first leg result and put this tie to the end. But Dynamo Zgrab made the round of 16 over the likes of Monaco and Leverkusen. So we cannot underestimate them. Oh, here's Luka Modric here. Maybe we can look to get something early here. Now Gabriel Jesus playing it back to Luka Modric. And just eight and a half minutes into the game, Luka Modric scores the opening goal. And I'll see a grab looking to get an equalizer here. They've kind of gotten in behind, trying to play some great defense, and they had a chance to equalize here, but the shot was not the greatest. Here's Luka Modric playing this one out wide for Lorenzo Insigne, and I've completely beaten the keeper near post. Not the greatest goalkeeping from them, but you know what? We take a goal, and that's Lorenzo Insigne's First goal in the Champions League this season, unless he scored some. Oh my gosh! Actually, it's Lorenzo Insigne's sixth goal. He scored five goals with Napoli in the group stage. Oh my goodness, that is brilliant passing. I have no idea how much I'm, I'm going to show you of that passing on the editing. But either way, Marcos Acuna has gone all the way here. And he's gifted an easy goal to Alejandro Papu Gomez. So I'm actually going to jump to the result for the first leg just because we dominated this one. And it is 3-0. It ends 3-0 actually and nothing much happens. We definitely take that as a first leg win. So guys, that is going to be it for episode number 16. We got through a decent amount in this episode. We had our ups and downs you could say you know we drew to Real Madrid which was all right we won against Alaves then we drew against Granada then we dominated against Athletic, um, Atletico Madrid, Athletic Club and Dinamo Zagreb so arguably you know it was a good finish um, we didn't actually lose in this episode we just had a couple draws here and there and you know you won't always win but either way in the next episode we are going to get through the rest of February obviously by playing this one against Villarreal and probably get through all of March here, which is going to include a lot of La Liga games, and the second leg of the Dynamo Zgrab one. And a quick update on the La Liga table, once again, we are still third place, tied with Atletico Madrid, but higher on goal difference, 
three points back from Real Madrid and four points back from Barcelona, but it's actually seven because Barcelona have already played their 25th La Liga game. As I said, that's going to be it for episode number 16. And guys, subscribe to the content, like the video if you liked it, because that is what it's for. Have a Twitch and the Discord in the description. Turn that bell icon so you don't miss out. And I'll see you guys on that next episode. Bye bye